Over the past few years while collecting and discussing Neo Geo, I would occasionally come across this obscure red system with complementing red translucent cartridges. Well, curiosity finally got the better of me recently and I decided to take a small plunge into the world of IGS's Polygame Master System. The Polygame Master System was released in 1997 and really didn't see much action or attention in North America. It was primarily pushed in Asian markets to compete with the Neo Geo. Hardly any of its games were ported to home consoles and so the system's titles are relatively unknown to most people here in North America. So this is the main motherboard. It's pretty compact, simple, and a lot of you will immediately recognize that it looks an awful lot like SNK's flat-loading MVS boards for Neo Geo, notably the MV1FZ. On one side of the board we have the dip switches and also pins which are used to wire up a third and fourth player for some of the beat em up games, and on the other side there's a volume dial. Then of course on the front we have the cart slot as well as the JAMA edge. The only caveat here being that the PGM utilizes four buttons, so you will need to wire up an extra button if your setup isn't currently configured as such. In my case, I used one of JNX's Atlas adapters to simply plug in my CPS2 kick harness to get the fourth button. This makes things both easy and convenient because I don't need to change out any of my button wiring. The other add-on I have for this board is an acrylic plate which protects the bottom of the PCB from getting scratched or otherwise damaged. This laser cut plate is sold as a kit from Lions 3 and I'll put a link to both that and the Atlas adapter in the description. The PGM can be obtained relatively cheaply too. This board was just $50 shipped which isn't too terrible for something that will give me the ability to play a new system and some additional games in my arcade machines. So speaking of games, what does this system actually have to offer? Well to be honest, it's not an overly expansive library, so if you're thinking Neo Geo or Naomi, you may be a little disappointed. There are fewer than 40 titles available for this system, but that includes about 6 or 7 Mahjong games, some card games, and even two photo Y2K cartridges, which are essentially the spot the difference between two pictures games you often see on touchscreen bar countertops. But there are a few good titles sprinkled in here, even if they are just a little bit derivative of games that you've already played. The game that got me to cave on this system, and that isn't a pun, but more on that later, is Demon Front. This is essentially the PGM's answer to Metal Slug. This is the first cart I purchased for the system, and it's one of just four games that I currently own. But given how much I like Metal Slug, I felt like this would be a worthy addition and something fun to have for arcade play. There are four different in-game characters to choose from, and each has a unique animal that can be used as an attack or shield. You also get to pick which stage you want to battle it out on, which kind of reminds me a little bit of Top Hunter if we're doing Neo Geo comparisons. It's getting more and more difficult to keep nostalgia from affecting my opinions on Metal Slug, but overall I think this one just falls a little short of what my expectations would be for a Slug clone in 2002. That said though, it's certainly fun to blast your way through levels and the ability to jump float your character adds some additional strategy to the title, and the overall graphics and sound are nicely done as well. The next cart I picked up was in a bundle with another, and it's a hack and slash beat em up style game. This is Knights of Valor Superheroes. The superheroes added to the end of the title indicates a revision, which is actually the third version of this game, and there are six Knights of Valor games for the PGM. The original Knights of Valor, then Knights of Valor Plus, Knights of Valor Superheroes, Knights of Valor 2, Knights of Valor 2 Nine Dragons, and then it comes full circle and back to Knights of Valor Superheroes Plus. Oh, and if that isn't enough for you, there is a Knights of Valor 2 New Legend and a Knights of Valor 3 game on the PGM2 system, as well as a Knights of Valor 3 HD game for the PGM3. Jesus, did you get all of that? I don't even know what I just said, but I'm not even going to attempt to repeat it. Just go and Google it. The games designated with the two, I believe, are intended to be true sequels. As for the other four iterations of the original release, my understanding is that the largest difference between them is the number of playable characters, which ranges anywhere from 5 to 20. On my cart, Superheroes, I have 12 selectable characters. I've really only scratched the surface with this one and I haven't spent much time with the other three versions of the game, 
so I can't speak to any gameplay or level variations just yet. If anyone wants to leave a thesis in the comments and break down the differences between all four, be my guest as I'm as curious as anyone as to what those are. My assumption would be that Super Heroes Plus, the final version of the first game, would be the ideal one to grab, but that's purely guesswork based on logic that is sometimes proven broken in the video game world. Sticking with the beat-em-up theme, another popular series on the PGM which also has several iterations is Oriental Legends. There are three versions of this game on the PGM and then Oriental Legend 2 would later be released on the PGM2 hardware. I have Oriental Legends Special, which is the second release of the original game, and stay with me, but not the third and final version. I haven't loved this one as much as Knights of Valor, which isn't to say that it's a bad game, but it does feel just a little more flat and generic. I'm curious to see what Oriental Legend 2 is like, but I've yet to pick up the PGM2 hardware, and given that there are only seven games for that, I may not get it unless it's a really great deal. All right, the cave pun I tossed out earlier was in reference to some gorgeous bullet hell shooters released for the PGM by Cave. Interestingly, these weren't put out as carts like the other PGM games. Similar to Neo Geo with Metal Slug 5 and SVC Chaos, these were released as standalone PCBs. Now Metal Slug 5 and SVC Chaos would eventually come to be released on carts as well, but that is not the case with the Cave PGM shooters. However, there are methods of creating your own carts of these games, and at one point there was at least one well-known source who was making and selling these in cart form. The original PCBs from what few I've come across have been extremely pricey, generally pushing $1,000. Even the bootleg versions of these carts being made have high asking prices. It's too bad because these are some great games that really deserve to be played, but at this point, emulation may be the only feasible route for most of us given the scarcity in price. The only officially released PGM shooter that I've come across in cart form is B-Storm, which oddly wasn't published by Cave, but IGS themselves. There are also several fighting games for the PGM system, such as The Killing Blade, Martial Masters, and Spectral vs. Generation. Each of these titles came out in the early 2000s and graphically look on par with 2D fighters of the same time. I've played each of the three aforementioned titles and while I could recommend them if your options were limited, I'd still prefer to spend my time with the 90s 2D fighter titans of SNK and Capcom. One other quick note while we're mentioning SNK and fighters, King of Fighters 98 was actually released for the PGM2 hardware in 2009. I found that both interesting and odd, but definitely thought it was worth mentioning. So that's it for today, guys. Just a quick overview of the PGM system that I've been playing a few games on recently. I definitely recommend giving a few of these games a try via emulator if you're curious, since, as I mentioned before, there really aren't that many ports available out there for consoles. I'd also like to call attention to two guys who have also done some videos on the PGM and whom are much more knowledgeable than I am with the system and that would be Luke Morse and Todd's Nerd Cave. I'll leave links for their videos down below. So definitely let me know in the comments what you think of this system or if you've played any of its games. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.